voy a buscar a mi Cristo con todo mi corazón Pa' que su mano se mueva con fuego y con amor Voy a buscar a mi Cristo con todo mi corazón Pa' que su mano se mueva con fuego y con amor Llamen los enfermos que serán sanados Llamen al caído, será levantado Buenos días, gracias por compartir conmigo otra nueva semana que sea bendecido. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamona Guadalupe. Este programa viene del Ministerio de la Casa de Oración para todas las personas. Que sea bendecido hoy. Hoy vamos a estar mirando en el libro de, de Tesalonia, capítulo 4, versículos 16 hasta 17. Vamos a estar mirando de los muertos. Aquí cuando Jesucristo, antes de la venida, cuando la venida de Jesucristo, Vamos a coger este momentito para yo orar para ti, para que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo. Gracias, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús de Nazaret, Dios. Yo oro para tu pueblo y los que están oyéndome de, de diferentes partes del mundo, Señor, que tú le des sabiduría, entendimiento y la gloria sea para ti, Señor. Porque tú le dejé, dejé y Señor, y tú le Señor y de señores. Señor, gracias por todo este momento. Hablando, Señor, dame de la fortaleza para hablar de los días cuando Jesucristo va a venir, que lo primero que va a llamar son los que están durmiendo en el Jesucristo. Gracias, Señor, los que oyen mi voz, que tú lo vayas bendiciendo, Señor, en nombre de Jesús. Amén. I want to welcome you today, another week, a wonderful week. It's still summertime, and it's wonderful that I am able, and you allow me to come into your home, to your home office, to your to your room or to your space. And I pray that you will be blessed, especially those who are watching this program from around the world. My name is Pastor Ramona Guadalupe. This program comes to you from the House of Prayer for all people. Today's theme topic is about the dead. It's about the dead of Jesus Christ. Those who are in Christ, when Jesus comes, he will call them first. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. Especially today, I want to take this moment and, um, and have another prayer for the family that has lost their loved one on the plane crash that I just, um, the, the plane explosion that happened near Ukraine and the Russian's border. Let me pray for our brothers and sisters, if any that were there. I know there was 23 Americans that were there on that plane. And let's pray for the family and let's pray for the world leaders that God will give them the strength to work to sort out these things in a peaceful manner. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for the souls who have been lost today, over 239 souls that was lost. God, you're the God of mercy. I ask of you to comfort the family, especially 23 United States citizens that had just perished, including the 239 citizens of other countries too. Father, come for the family and the family of this country and the family from around the world who are lamenting and grieving over the loss of their family member. Give them the strength, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, that you come for them during this time of difficulties. In Jesus' name, amen. So stay with me. This is a bilingual program, 15 minutes in Spanish, 15 minutes in English. But today I'm going to start first with English and then later I'm going to translate it in, in Spanish. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 14, here is the letter, the epistle letter from St. Paul. And he's encouraging the church in Thessalonica. He's encouraging them that these things, when Jesus Christ arrived, that these things would happen. And those who are in Christ that are alive today will not supersede those who have fallen asleep in Christ Jesus. So we're going to look at the verse, chapter 4, in the first Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 16 to 17. And I'm reading to you from the book of the NIV. And this is what he says. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud commandment and the voice of an archangel and with a trumpet 
call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive are lifted, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Blessed is the reading of the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. We're living in a time that is a most difficult time in history. Everything is being manifest, just like Jesus told us. The time and the date, no one knows, not even the angels. And you will look at chapter 5, and, and, and Paul goes on chapter 5 in 1 Thessalonians, and he explains to them that, my brothers, about the time and date, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. So he, he, here he is, that we should be always prepared when we start seeing these things, it's not for us to be frightened. It's for us to encourage one another because the day of the Lord is almost at hand. Many people would say, well, this, they've been saying that for many years. Well, I think we're living in the time that has been like never before. Not only that we see what Jesus has said, it will occur. It is actually being manifest and consummated what Jesus has told us that it would happen. First Thessalonian, it's a book of, a, it's an epistle letter that wrote, wrote to the Thessalonians in the church there to encourage one another. When you hear about these things that is happening in Jerusalem and what is happening in Israel and, and in Gaza, it is not for us to be afraid, it's for us to pray and to continue the work of the living God this is why Jesus came, so that we will continue no matter what happens. You know, today I was a little bit overwhelmed because as a prophet, the Lord gives me insights of what is going to come. Because according to the book of Isaiah chapter, chapter 42, verse um, 9, it talks about, in verse 8, it talks about that before anything, he says that I am the Lord thy God, that he would not share his glory with no one that he reveals things to come before it happens, and he will not be in competition with any great image. So God always reveals to his servant before anything happens. So I was a little bit lamenting, and I, I called up one of my colleagues from, um, from a different state, and uh, she encouraged me, and she fed me, and she gave me the strength to continue on my call in prayer for the world and for our brothers and sisters and those who do not know Christ. Here it is. No one knows the time. No one knows the date. But he says, and it says it here, that it will be like the, like the thief in the night. Those who knows if the thief is going to come and steal your stuff, you will stay up all night and make sure that your possession will not be stolen. But Jesus used, too, this metaphor, too, that it will be like that. So he wants us to be at watch, but not to be overwhelmed. So when I spoke to my colleague today, she encouraged me, she gave me the strength. Because as a prophet, one thing is, when the Lord reveals things to a prophet, many things, a prophet's job is to pray, the prophet's job is to make things right, and even to convict and confront those who do wrong, and even to pray before anything happens when the Lord wants us to pray for one another. So I am here to encourage my brothers and sisters and those who do not know Christ because Jesus is the way and the light. Without Jesus, there is no salvation. So times like this, it's not for us to be afraid. It's not for us to go, let's, let's beat them up or shoot them up and, 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 and gun ho, gun ho. No, this is a time that as citizens of the kingdom of God and as ambassadors of Jesus Christ, we take hold and stand firm. And this is where our prayers and our scriptures and sharing about the love of Jesus should be even more stronger than ever before. So I'm here to encourage you, just like St. Paul, he wrote a letter 
the epistle letter to the Thessalonians in that church there. And he goes on today to say, you know, those who are in Christ, that are dead in Christ, will not supersede those who are still living. In the verse chapter 5 in 1 Thessalonians, and Paul goes, you know, my brother, about this time and date, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the law will come like a thief in the night. Night. It's not for us to be afraid. It's for us to know that all these things that we have gone through, all the suffering, all the persecution, because those who walk in Christ will be persecuted. So we got to continue to encourage one another because there is, because the God that we serve is a God of love, not a God that wants us to, to take revenge because God says it, revenge is mine, leave room. And Jesus Christ, he's a prince of peace. This is what he's called the prince of peace. Anyone or any group that does anything that does not line up with God's ways and Jesus Christ, which is the savior of the world, without him, it doesn't matter how much good work you do, but if you don't have Jesus, it will be all in vain. So our job for those who do not know Christ is for you to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart and to, for him to be your Lord and Savior. That's the only way. It doesn't matter how many times you pray to, to whatever you, your faith is, but without Jesus, it will be totally in vain because Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the Christ and the anointed one. Jesus is the Savior of the world. You know, um, times like this, you know, many people say that we should do things that are good for one another. Those things are good. Absolutely, I will not object to that. But God wants us, especially those who have not known Christ, those who, who believe in something else, for that person and you that are watching to receive him because the time is almost near and we don't know the time and date and I will never go over the words of the Lord because it is written just like Jesus says, he, it is written. And the word of the Lord says that it will come like the thief of the night. So how will we be prepared for this moment? By receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, because that is the only way. And we, when he will arrive, we will be caught up with him. So as we see these things manifesting, radicalism that is happening and, and, and try to destroy God's creation, that is totally contrary to God. So because Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, he is the Prince of Peace. He makes that perfectly clear. And then first um, on the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 16, which many of you already know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the book of Romans chapter nine, it talks about that if we confess that Jesus is our Lord, we will be saved. And then the book of first John chapter four, verse 16, it states that God is love. And that's who God is. Those who walk in Christ are aligned with God's way. Any other is contrary to God. So because God is love, he wants us to share the compassion and love with the whole world because this is the way God is. God created all these things. As many of you enjoy the beauty, the sunsets, and especially lately, we've been receiving beautiful sunsets. Many of you have seen the beautiful days, the flowers, the summertime, and many of you are enjoying the fruit of the land, the fruit that comes in different seasons. There are some countries and some places who have had devastation and drought and so on. But our, those who are doing well, that these things are not touching you, our job is to pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven and pray for those parts of the United States that are having drought. We pray for them. We pray that they will rely on God for all they needs. I am telling you that through Christ Jesus, there is nothing else in this world. He is the source of life. In the book of Proverbs chapter eight, it talks about 
that those who find him will find life.